Okay, so now I'm going to read another quotation from the book, right? Mm -hmm. And this quotation now says, It was April 10, 2009, we're in 2009 now. Mm -hmm. Good Friday or Bad Friday, depending on who you asked. We were driving from a studio in the Windward Road area where the uprising roots band was based. The video for arguments was already recorded and was going through its post-production process. And the week before, we were introduced to Winston Mackinoff, a living legend and father of uprising roots drummer Black Kush. The studio itself was a haven for both of us. And we're talking about protege and yourself, yes. right? For OJ, it was a step in the right musical direction. For me, it was a great source of spiritual inspiration. On that particular Friday, I was happy to use my new chalice for the first time. Mm -hmm. All its parts were carefully made and delivered to me by two elder Rasta brethren, whose friendships meant a lot to me. And then it says here now, I waited for the right moment to use the chalice and finally had a strong urge to bring it oh. and share its inaugural use <laughs> with, with, those, <laughs> with, those, with those good souls by Winnard Road. After a great evening, Oji and I left the scene and turned mm -hmm. northward onto Mountain View Avenue. Perhaps a minute or so later, we encountered a routine spot check and were pulled over directly across the road from Mountain View Police Station. By then, I had assured OJ that I had flung my spliff tail out the window, inconveniently forgetting that I did not utilize all of the separate stash reserved for the chalice. I also did not think that the possession of a chalice was an offense unless one also possessed herb. So I was quite relaxed. Finish that story for us. So we get stopped now, Mama, and basically the inspector, you know, while they were doing the documents or the little, you know, formalities, the inspector took a special liking to me and decided to say, I want to frisk me and feed me up on them things. Not, not in a bad way. No matter make up your face, but I just say, him put him hand for me and I'm never in the mood for no man come put him hand Absolutely. Me. So him frisking me, frisking me, and, and, and then him, him, him catch the bag now and him, him see the bag. And the bag of the rasta colors on it and the marijuana leaf symbols and himself something must in there. And I'm sure he's smelling the raw herb. And possibly that too. So he searches and he finds the herb. Um and uh, immediately says, you know, I'm to be locked up. So you know, I cooperate with this, you know, I cooperate immediately because it is them job or whatever, but but you know, my maybe my maybe my demeanor um expresses that I believe that this is a wrong law. Right. But anyway, I'm cooperating. I'm going across the road. Now, <laughs> now OJ, now, known to many as Prota J, he's there um, trying to reason with the the, 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 um, the inspector just to say, you know, it's just a little $50 bag. Right. Just, just not easy with my bedroom, you know? Yeah, you're OJ, you know. Yeah. Officer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, well, I didn't hear much personally because I was already across the street being escorted by the squad of them. So, so all them are old Prota J? Because he, I took... I take um, yeah, it's my bag and I right. take responsibility for the bag. Okay. Um and and uh, you know, I could hear the the inspector shouting at OJ, this is a this is a felony possession. So I'm sure he was <laughs> he was tempted to laugh in front of him, but I am across the road laughing because I'm saying felony possession, like what's going on? So so you know, fifty dollars. <laughs> But then he must say the chalice is a felony possession as well or whatever. That Even caught me by surprise. Even without herb. Yeah, even right. without herb. Right. So anyway, we're in the, the in the station now and you know, I'm getting hot headed because them time they are still never really ascend to a certain level. You know, mentally and spiritually. Things used to bother me more. I was much more arrogant, much more hype. And, and so I, I would always back chat somebody, you know, instead right. of just keep the stillness. Right. <laughs> right. But Oji is a man that already have that, that kind of that kind of mentality. So he was balancing me and trying to say, just ease yourself out right. me and really. Right, right. So in easing myself now, I just back out. I had another bag that I carry with my books. I always work with books. Like I'm either writing a book or reading a book. And I back out this book now, um, my journal. And I started documenting what was going on in the room around me and the badge numbers of these officers in case anything happened. These are things that people should do, like no badge numbers, because when you get harassed, you, you have something. Right. And anyway, so how did they respond to that? Um, well, they, they didn't know I was doing it. They okay. just saw me, maybe I was sketching to them or something, but okay. I'm, I'm documenting. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, long story short, in, the, the, the squad of them was really good. Like, I really enjoyed their, their attitude towards me. They didn't ill-treat us or anything. Right. Um, we were running jokes and whatever. But when the inspector come in, 
him just carry an energy with him that when he, when he, when him enter the room, everybody falls silent and you know say him coming to to disrupt the, the positive energy. And that included the squad of them get silent. The squad of them get silent. So they, they, I felt like they were on my side, but them just doing them job. It's my brothers, you know. Right, right. But um, eventually he came in and he was like, boy, you know, you want back your weed? And he was like taunting me, you know, you want back your weed? So I said, no, but I want back my chalice. Right. And, you know, he's still back talking people or whatever. I said, I want back my chalice. Right. Anyway, do all the court dates and whatever, I got to stand up in front of this judge um judge judy and she and she, she said she, she called me a hooligan because of my appearance she said if I, if you look like a hooligan you will start to behave like a hooligan and then you will become a hooligan so i said thank you for that i said thank you for that um enlightening information because now i'm gonna pepper you and so we get that we get that from OJ. you know what can i just say this though can pepper. i just say this though let me just say this you see when you reach the court incident now yeah. I really had to laugh because I remember the first time I went into court. I don't know if it's because of, I don't know if it's because of our background. I don't know if it's because we're not really accustomed to people are bully we yeah. and a chat to we how them feel like them for chat to we. Mm -hmm. I remember standing up in court and figure the first time I went to court, long ago, and standing up and figure and say, me, I stand up normal. Mm -hmm. And the police come up to me and say, stand properly. And I'm yes, like, hey, man. No. All of that. All of that. What I'm saying to myself, I would have been there, but you know, I can't say what. Well, and I'm sister, me, and you know, I felt, to be honest with you, you know what, what feeling came to me in that courtroom at that moment? The feeling of a slave. Yeah. Yes, yes. I had never had the feeling of a slave before. Accurate, Kabaka would say. Very, very accurate. That's how, that's how it feels in there. You feel like you're on the chopping block on one yeah. side of the room, and there are these obnoxious people on the other side who realize that the power they hold in this space and time that they, they, they just want to just assert themselves as it's almost like they're god in there they feel like they're god and we never appreciate that so this judge judy now when you came up to her and obviously you're not accustomed to being spoken to that way and she took offense to it what were the things that she said to you <laughs> No, well, no, no, no. I, I did not, I did not really backchat her in the moment. But in my mind, I knew that this was to me a person in opposition to my energy. Like she allowed, she allowed, she allowed a spirit of oppression to be channeled through her, and I don't allow that in myself. So therefore, she's my opponent in this situation. But what I found interesting is that she said to you that she used to wrap her head. Yeah, she tell me how, oh yeah, man, when I was a girl and whatever. My mother said to me, Judes. Well, um, go down the road and cut your hair. Here's fifty dollar. Do this and ray ray and or cream your hair or whatever. And she took the fifty dollar and she go down there and she cream her hair and life is so much better now. That was the moral of her story. So I must take this moral and move on with my life. So you know, I was so upset that day and I remember reasoning with Reggie first and then I remember reasoning with OJ and and and, and then I remember writing this this short story to channel this aggression and, and this hatred that was building up inside of me for the system. And OJ read the story and it became it became it became the track called Wrong Side of the Law. Right. Which is on his first album, The Seven Year Itch. Right. But but it was so important for me to tell that story in the book because I realized that one, um, OJ was emerging in the mainstream and 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 and, 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 I, and I wanted people to understand like that story as an essence of how he operates and even how i operate when you get to know me and my book or whatever because that was the moment when he and i looked at each other and we said we're going to turn this very bad situation into something positive we're going to turn it into art right. and that's how the, the the short story came out and, the and then the, the song came out and then I think to this day that is how we operate. Everybody who we build with now, you know, Team Protege, like we all rally behind OJ at this moment mm -hmm. because theme thing I take off. But mm -hmm. it's, it's just the general energy of the ones who link in right. that circle. We, we believe in organic manifestation. Mm -hmm. So we, manifest, we, we can conceive what can happen in the future yeah. and we can make it happen. With just patience and time you know it's so true and we, we, we're talking about the word revolution but we want to talk about it in a way that perhaps we've never spoken about it before because wasn't it a great revelation to the eye to understand how and and to experience the difficulty of humility in a situation of slavery yes and and that's the thing it's always hardest the first time you know mama but you see once you see it work is a different thing after that because when i say 
I see the thing come out and the unbridled joy I got when OJ first sang that song to me in private. Him say, yo, I'm going to write a tune, you know. <laughs> and him sing it, and I said, I'm going to jump out of my skin. I'm going to say, yo, see it or no. This is how the thing work. And then we'll put it out there on the reception. Like, it doesn't even get that much airplay, but the amount, the, the, the amount of ratings that tune get worldwide is unbelievable. Like, him can perform that. Go over Europe now and I perform that, and the place shell. Boy, Bob Marley says, sing song after them, you know. Yeah, man, true, true. And a real thing. True, true, true. Very true. Proceed. And what is good about it, too, is that the book that the book that you wrote actually chronicles in a real way the, the whole experience with Judge Judy. Me love what you call her. <laughs> <laughs> it's with Judge Judy and even the taunting from the, the inspector. Yeah, man. That, in, in great detail. And if you notice, you know, at the end of the book, I, I say something like, I guess it's in the epilogue when I, when I say something to the effect of just, you know, I, I want the way I look on people gone by and I never get to meet them because they already passed on even before I was born. Um, they left behind clues for me to understand how to deal with the system. So when I read like Marcus Garvey, you know, I almost feel shame because so much things in point out to people. And if you just read his words, you would understand how the system work against black people or ever and oppressed people mm -hmm. and, and, and fashion your life accordingly. And so... Even in writing that account, it, it would seem like I was telling this story for fun and jokes you know, or whatever. But if you really check it, the, the things that are put in those sentences is to alert people. You know, even if I say somebody's name, it's just to say, it's not to really diss the person. You know, it's not like I diss in Judge Judy you know, or I diss in the inspector. But it's to say, here is how the energy manifests in the physical. It's true people like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a break. We're soon forward.